Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are continuing to make an infill plane, again. Now it's time to start making the handle and there really are no good patterns out there for making the handle of an infill plane because there are so many different styles and shapes and types and handle construction and connections. Uh, so I just decided to take a handle that I found rather comfortable and sketch it out and then add on what I need. And then also I need a 45 degree bed for the iron to sit on and then I can lop that off. To actually work on the handle, I've got this beautiful piece of cherry that will actually uh, be the right amount on there. It's a little thicker than it needs to be, so I'm gonna plane one side down and then use that as my reference face and then mark off to the other side and then plane the other side down to match it. Um, I like my, uh, my handles to be just a little bit fatter than seven eighths of an inch thick. Uh, I find that to be very comfortable. Some people like it around three quarter. Some people like it up to about an inch. Uh, and then I can take that pattern that I made and lay it out on this block and glue it down. Uh, there's really nothing specific to this particular pattern other than I, I did a bunch of uh, looking at other infill planes and what did I like and what didn't I like and found the shape that I, that I really liked. For all of the rounded sections, it's very easy to draw out with a, a circle pattern and find out where the center is, and then you can bore the hole through it, making everything that much easier. For everything else, then I'm going to come back in and do the majority of the stock removal uh, with saws. Most of the outside stuff I can do with the, the straight back saw. Then for the inside, of course, that means I need a turning saw because I have to get the blade inside of the holes. And I want to make sure that this front nose is perfectly square to the bottom because we're going to be insetting this into the block that we made last time. So I'm going to be checking it, make sure it is square to the side as well as square to the end. Uh, and then I also need the, the, the 45 to be then 45 off of that piece on there. Then we can get to the actual shaping. This is the part where I really enjoy this because you actually get to shape the handle down to feel something that just feels good in the hand. And I'll occasionally stop, pull it out, put it in my hand and just feel where does their problems, what feels good, what doesn't feel good. I'm using a very coarse rasp to take off most of the material and get it close to what I want. And then I'll come in with a fine rasp and then a coarse file and then a fine file and, and detail it down. Uh, this step does take a good bit of time, uh, so plan on it. <laughs> and the more of these you do, the easier it gets as with any project. But I really enjoy this part. Now we need to inset this handle into the block that we made last time. So I need to figure out exactly how wide it is, mark that off in the block, then I can transfer that to the marking gauge, and then mark out where the slot this is. I'm basically creating a mortise for the tenon, and the tenon is the handle that will slot into this. So I'm going to cut down either side, and I'm going to keep this a bit larger than it needs to be because I can come back in and adjust it to fit the handle uh, precisely. So for the taking out the majority in between those two cuts, we can chop down and then pair out and chop down and pair out. And this, anytime you're doing large chopping, this is a lot of fun. And I decided to go all the way through from one side, but to kind of skew the chisel a little ways, this should be a perfectly vertical cut. Cut, but I want to move it away from the line a little bit so I know I would come out the bottom a little farther away. Once I get close, then we can break it off. Ooh, that was kind of nice. To come at it from the other side, we have to put that into the vise because there's no real good way to hold it and actually chop in the leg itself. So we can chop down and uh, make it from basically line to line and play connect the dots from the top to the bottom. I'm going to come in with some plain floats and files and detail it down and you can see ooh, the handle doesn't quite fit so it shows me where I need to remove some material and this is why these are called plane makers files. Um, plane makers use these a lot and they, they are absolutely amazing. If you're going to be doing anything with plane making uh, or just general woodworking, getting a good set of plane makers files is phenomenal. These ones actually came from uh, Red Rose Reproductions. I purchased them this summer. So yeah, now we can fit that handle in and make sure everything is the way it wants to be and then we can glue it. I'm going to be using um, epoxy for this. Uh, is the whole thing is going to be uh, glued together with epoxy when I actually get to the infill. Make sure you get a copious amount on all surfaces and then slide it down into place. Um, I, this doesn't need a huge amount of clamping pressure, but I want to make sure it doesn't move around. I also want to make sure that the bottom is all flush and I want it to squeeze out um, all the way to the bottom and tight into that joint and get it as tight as we can. We're going to put one clamp on there, squeeze it up, and then we can set it aside and come back to it a little bit later and then smooth out all the joints because they're not quite perfect so we can do a little bit of detailing and smooth from one to the other. This is a step that I really enjoy because it's nice to get that clean, smooth transition and it just always feels good. 
This will actually be the bed that the iron sits on. And then I also want to true up the bottom sole that will be glued down into the, the brass body. Also want to transition between these two pieces inside. And for the shape of this and how it's actually going to come together, there are lots of different shapes and traditions, and each one has a slightly different aesthetic to it. On mine, I want to do some more chamfers on it, and I want to make it look a little bit different, but I'm going to pull from a couple different traditions. But uh, a lot of these, I'm just going to be lopping off corners and, and chamfering it. Here I was having a problem with this uh, turning as I was chiseling in it, so uh, I just brought over a hold fast and a block of wood and that will stop it from rotating so I can drive in. Um, I, I'm going to just take off large chunks with the chisel beveled down and then once I get close then I can really come in clean and file it up. And I love this with these small curls coming in and getting that nice transition down to the bottom. On the sides, I'm going to put in a chamfer that will transition from the brass body to the wood body. And so I have it drawn out where the brass body intersects with it. You want to make sure you get a really nice sharp chisel for this because you want to get a good clean surface. And if you have a dull chisel, you're going to be putting more force into it. Anytime you're putting more force into it, you're really going to be blowing things out. So having a good sharp chisel makes things easier. You can see how this transition will kind of come through. I'll be beveling the brass uh, later on, uh, but I want to get this in and get a nice uh, fit on it. Speaking of the brass body, uh, the actually the steel sole on the bottom comes with the mouth at square edges, and I want to file that back to a 45. This 45 will then match with the 45 on the handle. But I want to do it before I get the handle on there because it'll make it so much easier to actually do the filing work because the handle itself will not be in the way. Um, before actually gluing it into place, we need to scuff up the steel and brass where it will be connecting, uh, giving the epoxy a bit of a place to sit. Uh, you could do this traditionally with high glue. It actually works very, very well for the connection, uh, but I like to use uh, the epoxy in here. I'm also going to add a little bit of dye to it um, because there's a couple places where you'll you'll see it a little bit more, and this uh, transient dye um, will just add a little bit of coloring that makes it disappear with the, the oak beside it. I'm going to apply it to the brass, steel, and the wood body, and then wiggle it all down into place and then set it aside. Uh, it's a really nice tight fit, so I don't have to worry about clamping it or making sure it doesn't move around. Uh, it's got a, a, a very smooth fit between the sides. And then we can set this aside and then come back to it. And I want to make sure it's exactly where it needs to be because if it's out of alignment with the mouth, then that's going to run into problems. I do want to make sure they're seated all the way down, so I'm just going to do a couple squeeze clamps uh, just to pull it down in a little bit. Now, once we get that all cured up, we're going to rivet this. And the, the kit comes with a few of these rivets that have been sheared off. Um, but I want to clean them up so that they can drive through the hole nicely. I'm going to drill a test hole of 1 8 of an inch. And this goes through the brass, through the wood, and through the brass on the other side. So I can drill with the one all the way through and out the other side. And then I can come in with the appropriate size drill bit, uh, which in this case is a quarter inch and then uh, have that come from one side and then from the other side so I have a good transition from one to the other. So after drilling eighth inch, now we can come at the quarter inch and we can play connect the dots and now we can bore all the way through this. Then I'm going to chamfer the edges of the brass a little bit because when we put that rod through, we're going to peen it over and let it expand. And if you chamfer the outside just a little bit, that will give the, the, the steel head uh, something to expand into. Then we can drive these rods down through all the way and down out the other side. And uh, they are a bit of a tight fit. Um, I, I left them intentionally uh, just a hair oversize of the hole. But we can pound them down through, cut off any excess, and I'm going to leave the excess sticking out just a little bit so I can come back and, and peen it over. And this is why you have a ball peen hammer, uh, because it will actually mushroom the head and squish it into that chamfer that we just cut. For the, the body, I want to make sure I get a good, clean transition. There was some epoxy sticking out um, from the, the mouth into the, the wooden body. And then I can come through and actually file it. And I want to give a really clean transition because uh, this will be where the iron is sitting. And then I'll also have to file the front of the mouth, and I'm going to file the front of the mouth forward uh, until the iron sticks in. I'm actually going to leave the mouth closed for right now. That'll be one of the last things I do of actually filing the mouth to make it uh, uh, for the, the iron to stick out just a little bit. And here you can get an idea of how this will all fit in here. 
Uh, next, we'll need to attach the lever cap. Um, I'm going to wait on attaching the lever cap until I get most of the final details on this done. Uh, but we're getting really close. I only have another 30, 40 hours worth of work on it. So stay tuned because I'm having a lot of fun in here. <laughs> so there you have it. I'm... I'm starting to get excited, if you can't tell, and this is starting to look like something. So yes, I'm having a lot of fun here. Uh, there's a lot more to do with it. There's a reason that most new infill planes are priced in the thousands of dollars, because there's a lot of work that has to go into this to fit it. And if you want something to be sharp and clean, it's gonna take a lot of time. Uh, so there's a lot that's actually going on outside of the video, and I try and shoot one segment of it, and I come back and, and do more later. But I'm really, really looking forward to getting this up and running. So a little bit more to do on this, and I am having a lot of fun. If you have any questions about what I'm doing, throw those down in the comments down below. I do read through them, and I've answered as many of those as I can. Or you could just join one of those people who put comment down below, down below. Thank you. That actually means a lot and gets us in front of more people, helps out the channel, and, and really does work. So thank you for that. But if you really want to help out the channel and be absolutely amazing, then check out these names over here. Those are some of the patrons on Patreon, because without patrons or members, members, uh, people who actually support this channel, thank you. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. You are the reason we get to keep making videos like this, and if you like it and would like to help us out, think about becoming a patron or a member or clicking the thank you button. That means a lot. I think that'll do it for now, and until next time, have a wonderful day. Now, in the military world, you will find infill planes used quite a bit. Honestly, it is one of the best ways to get behind enemy lines and infiltrate them.